During practice, one of the men faints to the heat. Batiatus also complains about the heat. He's then informed that the magistrate is coming to the games. Batiatus wants to secure the main event. The magistrate and Solonius have arrived. They believe for rain to come down, it requires the blood of men in the arena, of the finest gladiators. Batiatus offers Crixus for the Primus. The magistrate says that Solonius has managed to secure Theocles. Batiatus says the match is unbalanced, but Salonius requests he also lets Spartacus fight alongside Crixus. Batiatus addresses his men and lets Crixus and Spartacus come forward. They will be fighting Theocles. All the men are concerned. Varro says the purse will be great. The Doctori wants to face Theocles himself again, but he's told to prepare the men. Asher provides insight into the assassins. Navia brings water from Dominic to Crixus. He enjoys her company. Spartacus wants to reconcile with Crixus, but he believes he can beat Theocles alone. Asher tells Bark that the men will lose. Barca tells Petro he will return, but Neus has set his eyes on the boy. Lucretia says that Salonius maneuvered Batiatus with this matchup. She's afraid of Crixus falling. Elithia then arrives. The Doctori takes down both men and wants them to come at him as two. Elithia says that she knows a priestess that can help infertile women. Spartacus tells Crixus that they need to fight as one, but he refuses and says that Spartacus fights to leave the walls and he to honor them. Spartacus tells him he fights because he's a slave like him. Crixus says he'll never leave this place and his wife has been raped by many men. They then start fighting, but are quickly stopped by the Doctori. Batiatus tells Spartacus they must fight as one or everyone loses everything. Asher says that Barca has captured the man. After Batiatus beats him severely, he says Avidius bought them. The Doctori shows his scars and explains how Theocles did it. He emphasized the need of fighting as one, to press, distract and strike as one. Asher says not to trust Quixus in the arena. What happened to his leg is a result of that. The priestess gives Lucretia some drink and is told to copulate within the hour. Avidius sees his wife dead. Batiatus holds his child and has come for revenge. The man admits that he hired the man, but Salonius paid off his debt in exchange for Batiatus' death. Barca then kills the man. He is then told to also take care of the child and burn the place down. Crixus says that Theocles is not fighting for wealth, but for the glory of facing the undefeated champion of Capua. He then says that there is no greater thing than standing victorious in the arena. Spartacus asks him if there is no purpose beyond the blood, if there is nothing else he fights for. Crixus remains silent. Crixus is summoned to copulate with Lucretia, but he does not have any desire before the menacing fight. Navia believes he'll die tomorrow and says he only cares for honor and glory. He says that's not all. They then embrace. Spartacus asks Vero to find his wife if he dies. Everyone is present at the arena, including the son of the magistrate. The men finally enter into the arena. The magistrate says that Avidius is dead and the boy is also feared dead among the ruins. Crixus asks Spartacus if his woman is the reason he refused to die, he affirms. He then says that there is perhaps something beyond glory. The men have entered into the arena. The gladiators watch silently. Theocles finally enters into the arena. Clouds suddenly appear. He charges the men and they attack simultaneously. The men fight well and then manage to cut him down. They start laughing. Crixus waves towards Navia. As everyone celebrates, Theocles stands up and says he will begin now. As they fight, Crixus pushes away Spartacus. However, he goes down. Spartacus continues, but he also goes down. Crixus stabs him, but he hits him and cuts Crixus down severely. As he's about to deliver the final blow, Spartacus attacks him, but he then also loses his shield. Just as the sun shines, Crixus reflects the rays off the helmet into the giant's eyes. He's blinded. Spartacus charges, disarms him and cuts him down. He strikes his neck several times and finally decapitates him with two swords. The mighty Theocles has fallen. Thunder is heard in the sky. Rain then pours down. Everyone's ecstatic. Crixus is dragged off whilst Navia is concerned. As the name Spartacus is cheered, he embraces the glory.